how to apply the requirements of IEC 6234. Is this question familiar to you? Don't worry, you are not alone. Many of us have asked the same question. In this video, I will help you to understand the bridge, the gap between the tedious standard requirements and your way of working. Hi, I'm Christian Kessner and you are watching a video that is part of my course on software for medical devices. The link for the course is in the video description below. While you're at it, click on that subscribe button so you never miss new content. Shall we get started? I hope you will enjoy. I often meet people saying that's not the way we work and claim that IEC 6234 is not practically applicable. I fully acknowledge this viewpoint and understand there are challenges. Still, the standard is not requiring you to implement any specific development process. As a matter of fact, you're free to choose whatever process that fits your organization and your way of working. But there is a small catch, just a small one. You cannot choose a random development process and claim compliance to IEC 6234. You have to show how you meet the requirements of the standard. In this video, you will learn how to use a checklist to document compliance for a development process. In my experience, the biggest challenge with the compliance is when you meet people external to your organization, for example, during an audit. And from an audit perspective, it is not much easier because you never know what you will be presented during an audit. To deal with this challenge, I suggest you have a checklist to justify how you are compliant with a specific standard. Such checklist makes things a lot easier, not only to facilitate audits, it is also useful when explaining the requirements behind the development process to your organization. Checklists do not need to be super complicated. You list the requirements in the standard, followed by a description of your process and activities meeting each specific requirement. And lastly, where to find evidence that the activities have been carried out. Checklists can be used to assess a specific project for compliance, but also for the implementation of a standard in an organization. Now let's be a little bit more hands-on and discuss software development processes. To do that, I will use a perhaps silly dinner example because I don't want to get too specific too early. The traditional way of describing a development process is arranged in a linear way. And if you think about it, many things in life are organized in a linear way. For example, when you prepare a dinner, I assume you cut and prepare the ingredients before you serve the dinner instead of after, right? There's usually a logical order to anything you do in life. A logical order is also what you find in the standard IEC 6234. There's usually some kind of idea what you want to achieve with the software before a coding starts. In standard terms, this could translate into the idea is your plan and requirement, coding is detailed design, and you probably test before you start using the software. And using the software means it has been released one way or another. Let's get back to the dinner and expand it to a three course dinner at the restaurant. You will have a starter, main dish and dessert. When you place the order, the chef will make up a plan to deliver according to your requirements. Most likely, you will not get the dessert first and you will not get all three dishes at the same time. There will be releases throughout the dinner and activities leading up to serving a plate at your table will be reiterated. The same applies to software. Unless it is a very tiny software, there will be intermediate releases and activities will reiterate all according to a plan. Sometimes you don't even know what you want for dessert when you order your starter and main dish. Or you change your mind and make changes to an already placed order. The same goes with software. Things change. Especially for software, this is common and not a surprise. A software development process should be good at change management. I hope you're not too hungry now. The similarities between having a dinner at a restaurant and working with software development are many. Regardless of the development process, you often must deliver in steps, manage changes and start working with incomplete requirements and start working with what you have. Some software development approaches make this more visible compared to others. For example, Agile development principle embraces changes while a traditional waterfall or V-model approach 
it looks like iteration does not exist at all, but it does. I will now do a simplification and possibly upset some people. The purpose is not to offend a particular development method. I want you to understand the similarities between two commonly used methods and show that there is no right or no wrong. Scrum development principle embraces changes, but you might feel there is a mismatch between IEC 6234 compared to working with agile methods. There is no need to worry. Working with backlog, stories and sprint planning is perfectly fine. IEC 6234 is often incorrectly understood as you must apply a waterfall process. Now let's be a little bit brutal and stretch out the famous picture of a scrum cycle and compare with a sequence of activities outlined by the standard. In the first three activities of the standards, we have software development planning, software requirement analysis and software architecture design. And here I argue and say you can find its many similarities with what in Scrum is called product backlog, sprint backlog and planning. In the next part you find actual coding work and confirmation that implementation meets defined requirements. Yes, the words and terminology are different, but the purpose and goal is very similar. Lastly, you find a software release. Depending on the system you are working with, this can be a full product release it can also be a software release which will be integrated with other systems such as hardware. In the standard you have also other supporting processes, but for now I'll leave them for other videos. I hope I haven't stepped too much on anyone's toes. My point here is that regardless of development method and what we call things, they all share the same goal, which is delivering a functional software. This happens through activities such as planning, review of requirements, coding and testing at different levels. This is where the audit checklist becomes handy. You can use your language and preferred terminology to describe how the requirements in IEC 62304 are met. Now let's make it more tangible with an example about verification of requirements requested by the standard. You need to verify the quality of your requirements by for example verifying that they do not contradict one another, are expressed in terms that avoid ambiguity, are traceable to system requirements or other sources. If we start with a scrum approach, this requirement would be fulfilled in many steps. You know, when eating an elephant, take one bite at a time. The wordings might be different compared to the standard, but you certainly don't want contradiction and ambiguities in your stories. If I simplify things, you verify software requirements on a story-based level instead of verifying your complete backlog of requirements. If we now compare with a waterfall approach, you typically aim for having nearly a full set of requirements, then you go for review. In this later example, you will not verify as frequently as you do in Scrum but you will spend more time in every review. So you have two different methods to get the same job done. Let's see how this can be captured in a checklist and we start with the Scrum approach. For the process I provide a high level explanation with references to a standard operating procedure also known as SOP or SOOP. In this example I claim that the actual verification of requirement happens in the sprint planning activity. Here I point out both deliverables and where to find information. The requirements are kept through stories in a tool called Jira. Records from sprint planning are kept within a wiki tool called Confluence. And the order trail for stories reveals who conducted the review. Maybe you have already noticed that for this example no information is kept on paper. This is perfectly fine because all information is there and I argue it is documented. Now over to the very same requirement but with a different approach. For the waterfall approach I reference a SOP and work instruction on how to conduct verification of requirements. For the deliverables I provide a template to document the review. For this example I have assumed a paper based system so the resulting record will be kept in a physical binder. So with regards to the choice of development method, it is your choice to choose what, what's appropriate for your organization. But the more you move away from the line of structure of a standard, the more you will benefit of a maintained checklist. In case you're into agile development, there's a very good technical report from Amy. 
I would recommend this report as a very reliable source of information and guidance. In this technical report, you find good guidance and inspiration, which may be useful to you when using the checklist. There's also a nice one-pager mapping IEC 6234 requirements to agile terminology. I will now walk you through the one-pager step by step. There will be more and more details on the screen, so you might want to be ready to hit pause at the end. It starts with high-level project activities, where you find software development planning, software requirement analysis, and software architecture design. As already mentioned in this video, you will most likely release several times and need to plan accordingly. And to be clear, I argue and say this will happen regardless of development method. Here you find standard requirements such as integration testing and software system testing. For each increment leading up to a, re a release, you want to assure that the new functionality and existing functionality is still working correctly. Therefore, you once again find software integration and software system testing. For each story, you're probably touching all design and development requirements defined in IEC 62304. Now we have reached the end of this video about development processes and compliance. I've intentionally been unclear about what development method to choose because that's your choice. But you have learned that different development processes will do the job and you can justify this with help of a checklist. A checklist is also a great common ground to be used during an audit. Thanks for watching. Do you want to learn more? Head over to medicaldevicehq.com and register for our courses. I'd love to see you there. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel and keep up with new videos through clicking the notifications button. Do you have any questions for me? Drop them in the comments. And if you like this video, share it so we can reach more people from the medical device industry. By the way, are you on LinkedIn? Find us there at Medical Device HQ. Thank you so much for staying with me until the end of this video. I'm Christian Kestner, and please remember, stay creative and compliant.